Hey, what's going on everybody? Paul Tech here and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be running the Geekbench 5 test as well as the N22 benchmark test on the Samsung Galaxy A20. Now my A20 here is the international unlocked model. I did purchase this off of Amazon. Now with my A20 here, I just want to share with you before I run the test that I do have the battery saving mode disabled as well as I have plenty of battery life on my A20. So it's not going to be any issues there. Let's go ahead and exit out of the status bar. Also want to share with you that all the recent applications have been cleared out for this test. And I'll go ahead and exit out of there and then go into the app drawer. So the first test we're going to be running is going to be the Geekbench 5 test. Now with the Geekbench 5, as I open up the application, you'll be able to see some of the specifications. Now my device here is rocking the Exynos 7885. Also has the Mali G71. Also has three gigs of RAM. And then you can see the resolution, the pixels per inch. Now with the Geekbench 5 here, it has been upgraded from Geekbench 4. So I've noticed the scores are on the lower side compared to when we were running this test on Geekbench 4. So kind of just keep that in mind if you see these scores on the low side. I'm gonna go ahead and speed through this because this test can kind of take long and I'll be back in just a moment. All right, so the test is completed. And like I said, the scores are gonna be on the lower side with Geekbench 5 now. Single core score, 246. Multi-core score, 859. As I scroll down, you can see some of the single core performance what it scored there and the different columns and different categories as well as the multi-core performance. So I'll also go ahead and take a look when it comes to the single core performance. So remember we got a score of 246. Now you can also scroll down and you're going to be able to see where the Samsung Galaxy A20 stacks up against some other devices on the market. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. Remember 246 was the score that the A20 received. And so as you can see, it's basically right below the Samsung Galaxy S6. And when it comes to the multi-core performance, we're at a score of 859. And I'll scroll down and you can see basically where it stacks up. So it looks like it's right above the Galaxy S7. Yeah, below the Samsung Galaxy S6. Interesting. And again, you know, I like making these videos. I like doing these tests because, you know, I know some people are interested in these numbers and they want to know, but definitely don't base your buying decision off these numbers. Real world performance is where it's at. And I'll talk about that after we run the next test here, the N22 benchmark test. So I'm going to go ahead and run this test. This test can take a little bit of time. So I'm going to speed through the test, but I'll keep recording. So so let's go ahead and get the test started. Here we go. All right, so the test is complete and the Samsung Galaxy A20 comes in with a score of 94,021. Beneath that, you can see the score for the CPU, the GPU, the UX, and the MEM. But that's the score that the N22 benchmark test is giving the Samsung Galaxy A20. I'll go ahead and go into the ranking column and we'll see you know where the Samsung Galaxy A20 you know ranks up against some other devices that are on the market. Now if you own a Samsung Galaxy A20 and you're watching this video do me a favor and run the same tests that I'm running here, the Geekbench 5 and the N22 benchmark test. And let me know what the score is that you get in the comment section below. But as you can see, it's right below the Honor 8X. So um, that's basically what it scores. But I want to hear from other owners of the Samsung Galaxy A20 that run this test, the Geekbench 5, the N22 benchmark test. Like, what are you getting? What are your scores? Um, but like I mentioned earlier, 
don't base your buying decision off these numbers here. I know it's fun to look at the numbers and run the test, but let me tell you, when it comes to real world performance, the A20 does a fantastic job. It's an excellent performing device, and I would hate for somebody not to go ahead and buy this device just based on some low numbers from Geekbench 5 or the Antutu benchmark test. But I've been using this as a daily driver for several months, and it's been a very reliable smartphone. I haven't had much hiccups or problems with it, and I would definitely recommend anybody that's interested in a good affordable Samsung device to go for the Samsung Galaxy A20. It's definitely a good purchase. All right, everybody, if you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up button and please subscribe to the channel for more future videos. This is Paul Tech, and I'll talk to you on the next one.